It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Am I in the Caribbean? No, white sand beaches in the Canaries that's not imported. I'm in Fuerteventura to check out the second largest island in the Canary Island. And this place is paradise for beach lovers. Not only great for the beach, but loads of other things too. Let's go check it out. And there's not many graveyards you'll find often on a beach. So now it's about a 40 minute drive down this road to one of the most dramatic parts of the island. And it is definitely worth visiting, but you really do have to travel all the way through the mountains there. I'm heading to Cofetti or Cofet, not quite sure how you pronounce that, to show you the beach, the dramatic cliffs, and also a graveyard on the beach. Also a little concerned because I don't actually have that much fuel. I've still got about 7.8 kilometers to go. My fuel does say it's good for 90, but I don't know if I trust that. Even on my sat nav, it's showing clouds. That's currently how high I am. These roads are just a bit scary. There's like just a drop there. The weather's turned a little bit rubbish. I don't think I'm going to chance it. I think I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'm also worried I'm not going to get back. So I'm going to take my car and get back down to get some fuel and come back tomorrow. Do you know what? It actually takes around about two and a half hours to get down here. Is it worth it? I guess we'll find out. The views are amazing. The roads are treacherous to say the least. Am I supposed to get over this? Blimey. I've got to take it so easy. By the way, it's not just me coming down here in a hire car. I've seen Fiat 500s and everything coming and trying to do this road and they've all managed it. Not gonna lie, I am quite nervous driving down this road. But this is the only way down here. And I don't know if you can see it just in the distance there. There's a, a lonely little house, which I'm gonna go and see if it's open because you can actually go in that house. It's called the Winter House. And it, um, it, it completely baffles me. This was built back in the early 1900s. And if you think about it, the, this road was not here then. How on earth did they get the materials to build that house? And I've made it. Amazes me how this little Citroen did it. Let's go and have a look around. Thanks, Mr. Citroen. You did me a great job. So literally the road does not go anywhere else other than to the winter house, which I'm gonna go up and see if it's open and have a look around in just a little bit. So other than the winter house, there are a couple more buildings recently added up there. Is that a bus stop? I'm going crazy, that's a bus stop? <laughs> and there's not many graveyards you'll find often on a beach. Just how like walking up to the doors is like buried in sand. There's also a lot of people in memory or buried here. So from the main road, it has taken me 50 minutes to drive here and the cliffs are so dramatic. And so is the beach. It's classed as one of the many great beaches on the island, but is also classed as very dangerous and swimming here is not advised. It's absolutely huge.
but it doesn't stop hundreds of people a day coming down to this beach because it's absolutely gorgeous and in the shadow of those cliffs look at this oh, I've lost my flip-flop okay next stop is the winter house over there let's go wow the road up here ain't much better <laughs> i've got a gimbal so the camera's probably not moving as much as i am it's crazy when you think i've been driving on these roads for the last good hour or so so it says it should be open it is a spanish holiday so not quite sure if it is open today but we'll have a look Tell you what, walking up here in flip-flops is not a great idea. It does make you think how on earth they built this. Because the road that I've come down was not there when they built this house in the early 1920s, I think. Don't believe anybody lives in the house, although I can see a satellite dish. I think there's maybe one room that's being used, but the rest of it is all dilapidated. Look at that old phone. Wow. So this is a, only this bit is open and it's, it's a museum. There's obviously um, some kind of German connection here as well. Wow, and outside they've got their own plunge pool. <laughs> it's a shame I can't go into the rest of the house. Obviously it is owned and it is private. And obviously donations are welcome, so I put two euros in. But look at the view. And this is obviously why they built the house here. Oh, blimey. But most of the house is dilapidated. That was an old bed. It's an amazing place to visit, the winter house here in Fuerteventura. It's not too much to see inside, but quite a lot of history. Grand Designs needs to come and pay a visit, don't you? Just this drop is blooming scary. Got a barbecue. For some reason, they've got an old sky dish. So if you can see that up there, out of wood, almost looks like a, an alligator head. So a lot of German, French, Spanish and Italian visitors are here. There's nothing in English though. Yikes. It's kind of scary, there's barbed wire there. So to find this beach, I've got to go down this dirt track road for a little bit. Not quite sure where it actually is because I've, I've been Googling it and all I come across is a popcorn beach hotel. I think this might be the start of it. What you can actually see looks like little bits of of popcorn, some bigger than others, but apparently it gets a lot bigger further up the beach. Now there is a popular surf spot just over there, and I hear it's literally around the other side, but yeah, we get a little bit of a, a mini glimpse of popcorn beach just here. Look, look at that. It does actually look like popcorn. I'm still looking for popcorn beach got to be careful because obviously being in a higher car I don't want to get a puncture I think we're almost there this must be it and the reason why I say it must be it is because there is a big sign there saying you're not allowed to take any of the popcorn as they call it from the beach do you know, I thought that was like a, a beach calf up here, but 
this is someone's private little I would say house this is provider everywhere so it's obviously private basic living eh So it is a popular tourist spot just uh, north of Coraleo. And like I said, we did see a little bit up there, but this is where it is proper popcorn style coral. And obviously these are remains of what used to be coral being washed up on the beaches. Look how white it is. Look at that. Proper bits of popcorn. I can't say I've ever seen anything like this before in my life on the beach. Look at that popcorn. Obviously I'm not going to take any but fascinating beach to be walking on. And just like popcorn, when you put it in water it floats. <laughs> look at it all here look. Washed up in all these pools. Worth taking a trip, having a look at this very unique beach. So right now I'm in the popular resort of Coraleo and we're going to have a walk all the way around here. There's a couple of beaches to check out and also the main harbour. I think I might have to get a coffee as well. So what people do, the, um, the famous sand dunes which we'll visit in a little bit are just beyond there. What they do is no real like walkway but people walk around the beach and then the other beach past the Wikiki restaurant over there. And then there's a little bit of a walkway up there towards the harbour. But a great place to come for a coffee or a drink. Obviously sunsets on the west, so you wouldn't see much of a sunset on this side. In fact, where I'm staying, you'd probably get some of the best sunsets. Got some chairs up there on the beach. It's one thing you will notice about Fuerteventura compared to the other Canary Islands like Lanzarote and Tenerife is that a lot of the beaches are this beautiful. Just look how gorgeous the water is. See I'm here in the middle of October and you get some absolutely gorgeous weather this time of year. It's currently 28 degrees. So we can see here on the map where I am there's another beach just up here lined with restaurants and cafes and then we'll walk onto the harbour. I do get rather a lot of comments on the videos. People always asking me, what's the, uh, the wheelchair access, what it's like? Well, as you can see here, you can get either a buggy or a wheelchair or anything else pretty close to the beach. Well, on the beach. I'll never forget it. The first time I ever came to Fuerteventura, I stayed in some apartments just up there. I and mean, this was the first bar that I actually went to, the Wikiki Beach Bar in Coraleo. It's semi-famous. I think if, if you've been here before, you'll know what I'm on about. It's pretty nice in there. On this side of the island, you get a lot of the trade winds, so there's loads of windsurfing centers here. I've never tried windsurfing. I so want to. You can see someone there learning. I think the most difficult thing for me is literally getting on the board in the water whilst he's bobbling around and then trying to do it. I've tried paddle boarding and failed miserably, even though I have a paddle board myself. Is the guy on a paddle board just out there? So we come to another beach, not quite sure what beach this is called, but this is the best thing about Fuerteventura as a beach is white sand beaches which a lot of people don't think of when they think of the Canary Islands. As you'll hear me repeatedly say in this video, you can't afford to go to the Caribbean, but you want one of those really beautiful white sand beach holidays. And Fuels Ventura is definitely the place for you, especially when I go further south. I've got to try and find the perfect spot for a coffee, as yet I haven't found one, although it did look pretty good down there on the beach, but it was pretty busy at the same time. So you can do lots of island hopping as well. You can go over to Lanzarote from here. In fact, you can see Lanzarote in the distance beyond the harbour. See, this is the kind of place that I like for a coffee, where you can just sit here and admire, and admire the view. 
that does not want to make me do surfing when I see something like that. Are there sharks in the water in the Canaries? It's a nice little beach here. So there's loads of places to eat in the main town, but if you want to walk along the, uh, the beach and the waterfront, there isn't too much of a beach stroke waterfront to walk around. Well, I thought I'd stop here for a Café Con Leche. Café Con Leche. Gabby will probably correct me, or you'll correct me if I'm wrong. My Spanish is very limited. Wow, this is the ultimate coffee. Look at this. It's nice just to sit here and enjoy the view. Cheers. So you can always do a little bit of island hop into La Boss Island, which is literally just over there. How much does it cost? 12 euros. Water taxi. Are they all just doing... Oh, they're doing also Lanzarote as well. Why do I really want to jump on that? So this is the harbour really of Coraleo. It's not overly that big. Wow, can you see the fish down there? All the fish in the sea just there. There's loads of them. So from here, sometimes if you're lucky, you can see the odd uh, whale. It's the boss island over there. And in the distance, just over there, you can see Lanzarote. And just away from the beach, obviously, is the old town of Coraleo. It's got loads of little shops and restaurants. So that was Mary Poppins then. I do love exploring these old little side streets in any Spanish town. Especially coming out to eat is always nice. I remember when I went to Gran Canaria, they were selling this stuff everywhere. They've eased back on it now, but about 10, 15 years ago, it was always about aloe plants and selling that aloe vera gel. For Halloween, an interesting way to advertise beachwear with cockroaches. Obviously, they're not real, <laughs> thankfully. Well, this is random. Did This used to be a petrol station. You can still see the shell sign up there, but now it's a steakhouse. That is well weird. Now I've just realised, just on the other side is where the petrol station is. But it did look like that was like an old bit of a random place to have the shell sign. So they must do some entertainment because there's a, a stage over here. Maybe when they have fiestas. So obviously the best way to get around the island is to hire a car. This beast cost me 50 euros and I've hired it for three days. And without this, I wouldn't be able to get around the island because the island from top to bottom is pretty long. In fact, it will take you around about two and a half hours to travel from the top down to the bottom. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this. Oh yeah, 50 euros also includes insurance for this for three days as well. So driving down to the south of the island, the landscape changes pretty dramatically I mean, you can see from Google Maps how this part of the island is pretty volcanic in the north and also a little bit in the south. And then you've got this little almost central bit just down near the south of the island that is almost just like a barren desert. So I've just parked the car up there. Costa Karma is that way. And there's like a big lagoon here where a lot of people do windsurfing. And also a massive sandbar that runs along it. I'm gonna try and see if I can get out to that sandbar, how deep the water goes, but we'll find out, I guess. Almost looks like you could be in the Seychelles. Hope there's no sinking sand. I think there's some flags laid out there so I can see where I'm gonna walk. These are all the kites. And I'm gonna walk out over there and across. Get deeper. And you'll always get the trade winds here, so you can come kite surfing all throughout the year. That almost
almost looks like how the sand is ultra fine on my feet. And I've made it. You can just see how many people are, are kite surfing out here today. There's literally probably about well over a hundred people there in the distance. Looking back to the the kite centre over there. I'm not going to attempt to walk over to that sandbar because I don't know how deep the water gets. Even though I can see people in the distance, I'm not going to try it because this camera's not waterproof. So we'll get in the car, go back over the other side. But wow, isn't this beautiful? Well, I can't say I've seen many coconut trees in the Canaries, but there is one right here and there's coconuts at the top there. Look at that. So I've come down to Playa Risco del Paso, I think that's how you say it, a popular spot for windsurfers, but also one of the nicest beaches on the island. And with big sandbanks and sandbars, obviously from the air you can see just how beautiful it is. It's great if you want to bring kids down here, the water's shallow. There's all these lagoons as well to enjoy. beautiful this is see when I've seen videos and photos of Fuerteventura in the past I've always seen views like this it's just so random to see there's a woman walking out there which is I think higher than me so if you want a little bit of winter Sun Four and a half hour flight. Flights are as cheap as what I paid, £150 return. To get the Caribbean, you should come to Fuerteventura. Ventura. But there's also somewhere else I want to show you. There's also got a lot of sand and it's quite famous, but we need to head we about a two hour trip in that direction to the northeast part of the island to Coraleo and let's check out the famous sand dunes. So the landscape changes again as we head into the national park and I think these dunes are bigger than the ones in Gran Canaria. So this is the Coraleo sand dunes. They stretch thousands of kilometers over this side of the island. And there's also a pretty nice hotel nestled right in the middle of them. Look at the sand blowing over the road, look at that. Also, the landscape might look a little bit familiar to Star Wars fans because parts of the last Star Wars movie have been filmed in Fuerteventura and I did think they used some of um, the Coraleo sand dunes as well to film but let's head over the dunes and also check out the beach and the rather famous hotel it's kind of crazy right where you can park just got to get up these dunes now in fact they do do bus tours as you can see as an excursion to come and see the dunes some of the dunes get so high further up there as we was coming in, um, there's big JCB trucks trying to pull all the sand away, otherwise they would literally just cover the road. And a lot of people think that the sand dunes here in Coraleo have been blown in from the Sahara, but they haven't because as you grab the sand, some of it is quite coarse. They literally evolved over thousands of years from sediment from the seabed to what you see today. And there's one good thing about this sand is that it's white, so therefore it doesn't get too hot. Unlike when I was in Gran Canaria and I was walking over the sand dunes, my feet were burning, but you can quite comfortably walk on the sand dunes here without any flip-flops and your feet won't burn. And if you look carefully, you can actually see tiny little plants growing in the sand dunes. I wonder how far that goes down actually. Wow, not very far. I feel bad. Bury that again. Makes you think, how on earth do they grow? Gonna have to try and remember where my car is. Fuerteventura being quite a windy island, it's quite handy to have these on the beach. Quite a few dotted around, as you can see in the distance. 
so you just nestle yourself in there repeating myself again but look at the color of the water So right now on the south of the island, temperatures actually feel a little bit warmer down here, maybe a couple of degrees. And I'm off to see that lighthouse and also check out one of the best beaches down here on the south of the island. I think you pronounce this as Moro Jabel or Moro Jabal. Let us know if I've got that wrong in the comments. There's a lot of hotels here. There's a few shops, but not much else to see. They've got a port around the corner. That's quite small. And from there you can get boats over to Tenerife. People doing some Segway tours. There's a sign there, do not feed the squirrels. Apparently they're native to Morocco. Can we see any? One thing I'm impressed about about Fuerteventura is the phone signal. Wherever I've been on the island, I've been able to get full coverage and using the internet as well. It's been absolutely brilliant. Back in England, you know, you'll be in some areas of London, Blackpool, Norfolk, Wales, and you can't get a signal. Yet here on an island in the Canaries, and there's loads of dormant volcanoes, you get a signal everywhere. Camera doesn't do it justice. This thing is huge. I was here once a few years ago and the tide literally came into pretty much where you see that water line and the sunbeds and the parasols all underwater. Nice little beach bar here. And because of the constant winds, it's handy to have these little shelters these little nets put up so you don't get sand blowing in your face. Like I say, very different for the Canaries. White sand beaches you don't often find in the Canaries unless they're imported. Look at that. That is beautiful. Hope you like my tour of Fuerteventura. If you want to see more videos from the Canary Islands, click on screen now. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe. I'll see you next time.